What is going on everyone? This video is about how to configure and get started with authoring AWS Glue jobs with PyCharm using AWS Glue interactive sessions on my local machine. As you will see by the length of the video, we can get this set up in almost 10 minutes. If you're not familiar with interactive glue sessions, it allows for programmers to build, test, run data preparation and analytics applications faster and more easily than before by providing an open source Jupyter kernel that can be integrated almost anywhere Jupyter notebooks can. So this allows us to start Apache Spark sessions very quickly with one minute billing minimums and extensive cost control features. So unlike dev endpoints, interactive sessions are serverless, so you don't have to worry about managing a cluster and can focus on what you do best, which is writing code to solve your data challenges. So in this video, I'll be following the solution overview written by AWS, which I'll provide a link in the description below. This video will cover how to create the needed AWS identity and access management policy with limited AWS S3 read privileges to our sample data, as well as the associated role for AWS Glue. After we configure our Glue role, I'll walk through how to configure a local development environment in Python to connect to AWS Glue interactive sessions to author our AWS Glue job. Finally, I'll walk through our sample code script to read data from S3 in a Jupyter Notebook, as well as cover some important AWS job configuration settings you should know about that can save you and your organization a lot of money while you're developing your jobs, so I highly recommend you stay to the end. I've highlighted the prereqs for this step-by-step -step tutorial on the bottom left on this slide. All right, so to get us started, we're in the AWS IAM console where we need to create an IAM policy that limits the read access to a public data set as well as the role for access to AWS Glue. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new policy. I'm gonna click on the JSON tab and I'm gonna copy and paste the policy that we need to access our data. So what this is doing is limiting our read access to this publicly available data set, which we're later gonna call in our Glue script that we're gonna develop locally. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next, click review, and we're gonna give this policy a name called glue interactive policy to limit S3. And we're gonna hit create policy. All right, next we're gonna create an IAM role for AWS glue. So now we're gonna go ahead and choose roles, select create role, and for trust entity type, we're gonna leave it on AWS service. And we're going to scroll down and select use case for other AWS services. And we're going to type in glue. We're going to select that. Now we're going to make sure we select glue here and hit next. All right, so now we need to select our policy permissions for this role. So we're going to search for this role called AWS glue service role. And we're going to see that this is already a managed policy by AWS. So we're just going to select that. And next we're gonna add the policy that we created to limit our data to the S3 bucket that we're interested in. And that should appear here as well. So we're gonna select that as well. And we're going to see that we now have two policies selected and we can go ahead to the next menu. Great, and now we're gonna give this a name called glue interactive role. And as you can see here, this will allow glue to call AWS services on our behalf. And if we scroll down, we can see that we have our two policies attached and we can go ahead and click the create role button. Great, so we finished step one of our tutorial. So we've now successfully configured our role we need to develop our glue job locally. So now we're gonna head over to PyCharm to configure our development environment access. And we're gonna be configuring this for our Windows machine. All right, so I just went ahead to open PyCharm and I'm gonna create a new project. And I'm gonna call this project AWS glue sessions. And we're gonna go ahead to create a new virtual environment. So I'm gonna use my base interpreter 3.10. I'm also gonna select make available for other projects. So if other projects in the future wanna use this, they can. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit create. So a new window is gonna open up now, which is great. And we now have our virtual environment, which is installed. Now, if we just wanna go ahead to confirm that our project has been associated with this, if I go to file, go to settings, and if we click on our project, I want to make sure we go to Python interpreter and make sure we're selecting that new Python interpreter that we just installed. And because it's a fresh virtual environment that we've created, you're only going to see three different packages here. That is okay. We're going to go ahead and install the packages we need. So I'm just going to hit apply. Okay. 
So we could install the libraries we need in the previous Python interpreter setting window, but I'm going to go ahead and install it through the PowerShell in PyCharm. First, I'm going to go view. What's nice in PyCharm is we actually don't have to leave and open up PowerShell. We can do this directly in here. I'm going to go to tool window and hit terminal. All right, now we can go and install AWS Glue Sessions as well as the associated libraries that it needs. So we're going to add pip3 install upgrade Jupyter photo 3 AWS Glue Sessions. I'm going to hit OK. So now it's going to install all the libraries that we need for this to work. So I'm going to skip ahead until all these libraries are fully installed. This might take a couple of minutes. OK, so all the libraries I needed have been successfully configured. So just to confirm, if I hit File, go to Settings. And now in our Python interpreter, we're going to see all these libraries have been installed, which is great. So we're almost ready to go. Next, we need to configure our Jupyter kernel to have Glue PySpark installed. So next, we're going to find the location of our Glue session folder. So I'm going to do pip3 show AWS Glue sessions and this might be the location might be different for you and you see under this location here it tells us where it is installed great so we're now going to navigate to that directory so i'm going to do just change d virtual environment lib site packages and hit ok now if i just list this directory see that it's not empty we're just now going to navigate to our session kernel folder so we're going to add change d again aws glue interactive sessions kernel and hit OK. Right now we can configure our Jupyter kernels that we need. So, so we're going to use the command Jupyter kernel spec install glue iSpark. Hit OK. And then next we're going to do Jupyter kernel spec install glue spark. Great. So as you can see here, we've removed the existing kernel from this location and we have assigned it to our virtual environment location now. Next, we're going to add our AWS Glue service role to our local AWS profile that's configured on our computer if you haven't configured that already. So because I have AWS Toolkit installed at the bottom right of my screen, if I click on the profile button and if I click all credentials, I can see this button that says edit AWS credential file. So I can actually edit the credential file without having to go to the location, which is pretty cool. So if I click on it, you should see your default profile that's been configured. If this has been configured already, and I just want to remind everyone to never share your AWS access key or secret access key with anybody. That's why I have this blurred out here. And now we're going to add a new line for our glue service role, and it's going to be called glue role underscore ARN. So this is what the Jupyter Notebook role is going to be looking for every time Spark is initiated. And we're going to be making it equal to the ARN that we created when we configured the credentials for it earlier. So it should start with ARN and it should have your account number and then the role which it is equal to here. And we just want to make sure that our profile is reloaded. So as you can see in my event log here, I just had my profile reload as a result of the change, which is great. And we can now go ahead and close that file. So now we can create our Jupyter Notebook that we can use to start developing our job to read and do a small transform on some test data. So within my project directory, I'm going to right click and hit new, going to go to a Jupyter Notebook, and we're going to call it glue interactive underscore session. Great. So now you can see that we're connected to our local host. But because we've configured PySpark already, if we hit the drop down, we should now see two new additions that appear. So we're going to select Glue PySpark. All right, so we're going to add some Glue config magics in order to limit some costs when we start up our interactive Glue session. So the first parameter I'm going to add is a number of workers. So the, by default, it's set to five. However, since we're developing locally, we want to minimize our costs. I'm going to set the number of workers to two. And idle timeout, so the by default it is 48 hours if I forget to end my session. However, by setting it to 15 minutes, if for some reason I walk away for and leave this session running, it's going to end after 15 minutes of inactivity, which is great. So let's just go ahead and give this a run to configure and start our session. 
Great, so now you can see here we're initiating our PySpark session and you can see here that by default there wasn't going to be five workers but now we've set it to 15 and the current idle timeout was the default which is 48 hours and now we're setting it to 15 minutes. All right, so to make sure our session is running, we can use this status magic and if we give that a run, we can see now that we have a session ID so we're good. Uh, we can see how long it's been running and we are ready to start developing. All right, so now we're going to add some boilerplate syntax for AWS Glue to get it initiated. Great. So now that we've successfully imported all the libraries we need, the next block of code is we're going to call our data set from this sample S3 directory. So as you can see here, we're using the create data frame from option. So we're going to be reading in this CSV file into our Spark data frame. So let's just give that a run. Great, so we have successfully read in our data set. We can now see that we had 163,000 records and the schema of our data. So next we're going to now do a simple transform by casting our data set to the right data type. So for example, if you see here, our provider ID is a string, but we want to convert that to be an integer. So we're going to use resolve choice method on our dynamic data frame. And let's just give that a run here. And great. Now you can see that the provider ID has been set to be an integer, which is long. And finally, let's just go ahead, add another line of code and select the first 10 records. Great. And you can see here, we've got the first 10 records for the provider name column. So we are now done reading and transforming our sample data and now to shut down our cluster so we don't incur additional costs. The tutorial documentation I'm following says to use the percent delete underscore session glue magic to delete the session after we are done. But as of making this video, the current glue interactive session library version I'm using doesn't seem to be working. So hopefully this works with a later release. Alternatively, we can use stop session and we're going to give that a run. Great, so now we have successfully stopped our session and we're no longer incurring costs. All right, so there you go. We've successfully configured PyCharm to run interactive glue sessions and we've successfully retrieved and did a basic transform on a sample data set. So I hope this video was helpful for configuring interactive glue sessions. Thanks so much for watching. And if you're new to my channel and interested in more videos on working with data on AWS, please consider subscribing. Thanks again and see you next time.